My name is Colleen English. I'm the Superintendent for Sustainable Development Communities and External Relations with Diavik Diamond Mines. There's a couple of different things that are being done around closure. What, one of the, um, <laughs> the strongest, so again, a fairly leg negative legacy in the north around mines and especially closing mines, um, leaving sort of environmental disasters and those types of things behind. Um, and so that was another big component of our environmental assessment was let's start talking about closure now, let's start planning for closure now while you're developing the mine. Um, so a lot of the, de the design of the mine was actually geared towards closure. Um, there's a couple of key components. We have an interim closure and reclamation plan that um, we've always had. We, we started with a closure plan, we'll end with a closure plan essentially. But that plan is going to evolve and change um, as our mine progresses. Uh, that plan is definitely going to evolve and change. And so we just went through uh, our last submission, of, our most recent submission of the Interim Closure and Reclamation Plan, which was approved um, by the Keezy Land and Water Board. And that basically says, you know, for this point in the mine life, this is what we have planned, but we still have these questions that we need to answer in order to know fully how this mine is going to look when it's closed. A lot of those questions come back to community concerns and and really just trying to work with the communities to say, what does this landscape look like when we're gone? You know, what are the what are some of those key components for the environment that are gonna that are gonna um, link into how wildlife uses the area? You know, what the what the landscape looks like in general. So if you talk about a rock pile, you know, is it smooth and round so that caribou can come up it and over it, or do you keep it blocky and steep so that they don't go near it? You know, what are those kind of considerations that the communities have that they want to see in the end when the mine is closed? So um, that interim closure and reclamation plan will eventually lead to a final closure plan. And, um, and that's something that we're really starting to generate discussions on with the communities now to try to start them thinking down the track of, you know, what do you want the mine to look like in the end and what's that landscape going to look like for you who might want to go back and use it um, well after the mine is done. Right now, when you look at the picture of the mine, you know, uh, you know one of the probably most uh, prominent features of it is this open pit. Uh, mm -hmm. What's going to happen with that? Yeah, so the plan is that um, the pits would be filled with water once it's done. So um, one of the things that's been talked about is sort of washing the walls of any of the residues that may be on the on the pit um, walls. That's been something that's been raised by the communities. And then the pits would be filled with water, so um, we would pump water into the pits. The water would sit within those pits in order for us to be confident that the water quality is good enough to be linked back into Lac de Gras. And then the plan is to breach the dikes of the pit, so basically to cut out sections of the dike so that then this whole area would be reconnected back to Lac de Gras um, as it was before. So. Obviously, that was sort of underwater before, and it would be underwater again at closure. And then chunks of the island would be left um, as islands, as were there before. And then some of this area here is actually um, fish habitat being designed, um, so man-made fish habitat, essentially, that, uh, that will be left as shallower areas that fish can use for spawning. Okay. Um. So that's the plan.